Hey everybody, welcome to What a Week. Chris McKinnon here with John Keller to talk politics. In honor of the coronavirus, let's forego the fist, the fist bump, bump for the health, much healthier <laughs> elbow bump. bump. Ouch! <laughs> Sorry, John. Um, hey, let's kick things off with the most recent debate down in South Carolina. Bernie Sanders yeah. going into this basically as the front runner here, and all the other candidates basically needed to try to put the brakes on his train. How do you think they did? I think they roughed him up pretty good. Now, uh, I didn't see anything fatal occur. Uh, and, you know, Bernie is Bernie. He's combative. He's feisty. That's what his supporters like about him. And he, he delivered on that. Uh, but uh, it, it, watching it, it struck me, I don't think I've ever seen him take heat like that in a setting like this. I don't think I've ever heard him get booed at an event, which happened a couple of times there. And I don't think he handled it particularly well. So while I don't see any reason to think that that debate alone knocks him out of his frontrunner status. We'll find out more on Saturday in South Carolina and then on Super Tuesday. Next Tuesday, uh, I don't think he added any steam to the, uh, to the bandwagon there. Do you think Joe Biden did enough to uh, maybe cement his status down in South Carolina? Because, I mean, this is really his state that he's been putting all his eggs in. Last couple of debates, he's looked a lot better. Now, he had the bar was pretty low, pretty low yeah. because his earlier debate appearances were wretched. I think mm -hmm. even his own supporters acknowledge that. But he's shown a pulse. Uh, he's been able to convey a better command of his material in the situation, a feistiness, but also uh, show some personality. I loved his joke in the debate about how uh, he was, he remarked that I'm the only one who seems to be obeying the time rules mm. here. He, and he said it was probably my good Catholic school <laughs> upbringing. You know, that was great. Maybe, I don't know if people around the country enjoyed it as much as maybe <laughs> we did here. But so, uh, look. Uh, we'll know more Saturday night into Sunday morning. If he comes away with a solid win in South Carolina, that could very well have a ripple effect. Uh, it would help him if some of the other so-called moderates started to drop out of this race. Yeah. But uh, could it project him into a, uh, a good showing on Super Tuesday? Yes, it possibly could. But uh, it's, this is the moment. It's do or die now or else you know, Bernie could uh, really pick up uh, some major steam. Could be running away with the nomination. He could be. Uh, if he does well on Super Tuesday, look out. All right. Uh, let's talk about the, since we did the elbow bump, yeah. the coronavirus yeah. and the uh, Trump administration's response to this. Um, you've got, you know, the CDC and HHS uh, coming out and saying this is a basically inevitable. Yeah. And then you had the president in his press conference kind of going off script here. Kind of going off script. The press conference was sort of a rambling, meandering mm -hmm. disaster. Uh, now he's appointed Pence, the Mike, Vice President Pence, yeah. the czar. We'll see how that works out. But even before that, the initial reactions were like, oh, uh, this is no big deal. This is all going to be fine. Uh, uh, go stock market. You know, he's obsessed with the stock market. I don't think the stock market is first and foremost in the minds of Americans who are concerned yeah. about a possible pandemic here. Uh, n not every American is in the stock market, right. for starters. Uh, so look, uh, there's a long history of situations that unexpectedly arise that can have devastating political consequences if leadership doesn't perform. Perhaps the most notable example would be uh, George W. Bush and Katrina. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is this potentially Trump's Katrina? I hope not, because that would mean a lot of uh, a lot of people sick get people, sick. Yeah. Get sick. We don't want to see sick people or dying people under any circumstances. But uh, it's risky. There's no two ways about it. And the stock market, unfortunately, has taken a beating with this whole thing. So yeah, I mean, the the good news is, uh, at some point, this will be resolved. Yeah. And the stock market will come back. If you were about to retire and cash in your 401k, like like in March, it's Might bad news. Otherwise, I, I think you can relax. All right, sounds good. And let's bring it back home and talk about uh, transportation. Something we've been talking yeah. about just, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've yeah. been talking about it a ton. Uh, so the House has come out with a plan here, and it, it, it calls for a gas tax, an increase on fees for Uber and Lyft. Yep. Uh, companies to pay more in taxes. Corporate taxes. Yes. Yeah. Thoughts on this? Will well, it go anywhere. Uh, well, this is the House proposal. Now it's got to work its way th through the Senate, mm -hmm. and the governor at some point will yeah. weigh in here. Uh, in my experience, uh, an idea or a piece of legislation, you know, it's pretty good if 
Just about everybody is complaining about it. Yeah. Uh, in this case, the Chamber of Commerce in Boston and other business interests, they don't like that corporate tax. Mm -hmm. uh, the Uber and Lyft people, guess what? They don't like the Uber and Lyft fees. Uh, drivers may uh, protest against the gas tax, and already some, some of the few Republicans at Beacon Hill are saying tax hike, no yeah. way. Uh, I think uh, uh, the problem for all the complainers is that uh, Speaker DeLeo and his leadership team have done something very smart. They've spread the pain around mm -hmm. among these special interest groups and come up with something that, while no one, even DeLeo, doesn't suggest this is the panacea, this will provide all the money we need to fix the T and yeah. fix the roads, it's a step forward. And the bottom line is, as furious as people are about the quality of the tea and, and, trans and the traffic gridlock we're suffering with, I, I think really all, all people want to see is real, tangible progress yeah. going forward. They don't want to hear a lot of excuses. They don't want to hear a lot of ideology clouding the result. They want to see action. And if that's what this yields, then everyone will come out smelling like a rose in spite of all the whining. I'll have to see what happens with it. Have a great weekend. You too, John, and all of you will see you next time on What a Week.